and we are rolling. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Yes, hello. It's the Vinyl Vandals back, um, but this time it's me solo. Uh, shout out to Rid DJ Riddler, John and Julie, but it's me by myself today, and it's a special Vinyl Vandal uh, podcast. It's not your usual favourite five um, UK or USA hip hop. This is a special, and I've got a special guest who goes by the name of Ruben Green. Ruben Green or Ruben J Green? Which one we're going with today? Ruben Green. Ruben Green today. Ruben Green. Okay. Um, and tell us a little bit about yourself, Ruben. Just a little few lines about who you are. Okay. Well, I think first and most importantly, I am your nephew. Yeah. Um, and been heavily influenced by music across my life through loads of different family members, including yourself. And um, with that, um, I had many things I was interested in. I love football, um, I love graphic design, I love media, and I studied media. But I fell into the radio because that married together, I think, my two uh, main loves and passion, which is media, communication, which is one, and then music. Um, okay. So I went into radio presenting, and uh, that's what I've been doing for the last eight, nine years now. Okay, nice one. Eight, oh, is it as long as that now? Eight, nine years yeah. you've been on the radio? Yeah, a long time. Okay. Well, you're a veteran now then. Okay. Yeah, I'm an old man now. <laughs> uh, hot off the press, you know, I know you say you do radio, but you might want to get in for the job at ITV. I hear they're looking for a new presenter because Piers Morgan's just walked off today. <laughs> I'm a great much cheaper than Piers, I reckon. <laughs> and not as biased, hopefully. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, yes, just, uh, just for full, full disclosure, Ruben J. Green, or Ruben Green, um, is my nephew. He's my little sister's son. Um, so, yes, he is definitely part of the, of the family tree. Okay. So, Ruben, um, ask you one, because I think it's an interesting story that you've got to tell about your musical influence. Um, it is hip-hop related, because uh, hip-hop has definitely given birth to you and your musical tastes, as one of the genres, anyway, that's your musical taste. Um, and I think, obviously, it would be good for you to share that. Um, first of all, obviously, as Vinyl Vandals, we are vinyl addicts. We like our vinyl, um, and I know you like your vinyl, but today you haven't chosen vinyl. Do you want to explain why that is? Yes, um, maybe, maybe I'm showing my age, but most of my inspiration and musical influence have come from my parents. I don't have what, the music that they gave to me or the music that they played at home. If it was my own purchases, Maybe I'll be a bit older and I can show you what I bought and what inspired me as a child. But uh, all my music has come from my mum and my dad, mainly yourself and other family members. And also, I'm from the digital age as well, where a lot of the music that I came across was sitting on my computer and downloading them. Um, but of course, we need some visual representation. So I printed out the covers. Okay. To show everyone watching and listening at home. Um, yeah, that's the reason. Okay, nice one. So. Um, let's get straight into it. What is your first album of, that's influenced you in your musical journey? Yeah, so I wanted to pick albums that have an impact to me uh, in many ways, not just simply I like the album. Yeah. Um, so, and some did not make it, and I've watched the show many times, and I've seen people's pain. And I've done <laughs> pain. Now, albums I wanted to play, um, but I'm going to start off with this one, I think is a good one to start with, which is Incognito. No Time yeah. Like the Future. Um, yeah. It was released in 1999. Um, and it was released on Talking Loud, which you'll see is a theme today. Uh, they're a great label. Talking Loud, yeah? Talking Loud, yeah. And um, yeah, this is a crazy good album. Okay, so what, who are incognito, for those who don't know, who are incognito, um, why do you like them so much? Yeah, explain that, please. So Incognito is a jazz fusion soul band uh, yeah. they've been going for a long time, fronted by a man called Bluey. Um, and they play, like I said, some amazing jazz and yeah. soul and house as well. They made quite a few well-known songs um, yeah. and quite a few well-known albums. But this particular album, and definitely across the last few days, I was looking to see what other people thought. And uh, it's not as popular as I thought it would be, which is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very special album to me. One, because my mom and my dad love it. Two, it was played in my house all the time. But three, um, it introduced me to sounds, not just music, but sounds that um, really interested me. You know, the sounds of South America, 
um, the more tropical sounds to music, or actually using sounds in a song like Rainfall. Yeah. You know, one of the tracks called Black Rain, it just starts off with this heavy tropical rain. Um, and it has an amazing jazz track. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great album. Great, great album. Um, where are Incognito from? They are from London. So uh, Bluey is Bluey is based in London, but they have so many members um, across the spectrum. There's many American artists involved, like an artist called Tony Monroe, uh, mm -hmm. who came later. Uh, he's not from from England, um, but I would say predominantly, yeah, London based. Originally. Okay, so that influence you would say has come from your mom, your dad, or both? From both. Um, I, I think it is actually my dad's album. But yeah. I was born, they both enjoyed it, and then I was listening to it at home. But I, would, I wouldn't say it's my dad's or my mom's, it's, it's from both. Okay. Yeah. Are Incognito the one that sang that song? Apparently, am I right here? What's the song? What's the famous songs? Uh, uh, you're thinking of like the more commercially successful songs, um, which are not coming to my mind right now. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, they are, they are pretty well known for a few commercial uh, right. successful songs. Okay. Um, but yeah, this album isn't one of the commercial well, it's ones. one of the commercial ones, okay. So, do you know, obviously, the next question? No. What the next question is going to be, what is your favourite song of that album? Oh, okay, this is one of the, it's not hard. It's I Can See The Future. Uh, that is the standout track. Um, mm -hmm. Often you find, or I find, the title track to the album is usually the best one. Right. Uh, well, on that album, and this definitely is one of those. It's uh, quite a long song. Um, Many, many elements of different sounds, again, talking about the jazz, the soul, yeah. uh, Latin sounds, African sounds as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's easily my favourite. I'm not even, it's not hard to say. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and I also want to talk about, um, we're talking about influences here. Yeah. Uh, my mum is a massive soul diva, neo-soul diva, R&B, yeah. uh, a lot of stuff. I know me and you laugh at sometimes when you're like, oh, all that romantic stuff, turn it off, because um, we're not really into that. But being a child of my mum, I hear it at home all the time, I'm going to have a slight affinity to it. And I have noticed that there is a connection between um, the music that I grew up on, uh, the connection between the two, and the music that I, I like nowadays. Yeah. Um, kind of in between each album, I've got like a reference to, to things. So incognito, like I said, jazz, Latin and soul. Um, but the soul element uh, and having a vocal that's really strong, um, yeah. I think I like it from my mum's choice of music. You know, the neo soul the, mm -hmm. and the, the R&B stuff, uh, yeah. the George Benson's or the, the Jill Scott's. And as an artist on there, I mentioned briefly, Tony Monroe, who joined later. Now, I've only known his name later on in my own life from digging and finding the music as a soulful house artist. Yeah. I didn't know at all that he was part of Incognito. Okay. And I just find a lot of the stuff that I picked today is always comes full circle. There's yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, I remember uh, for me is uh, obviously your granddad, my dad, Pops, um, playing stuff and I used to be like, you know, every Sunday we'd go to church, you know, and then when we came back from church, Pops later on when he'd be, you know, be, when we'd been to church and, that, and he'd be in the club and that, we'd, he'd move all of the the chairs in the, in the living room out and you know, he'd put music on. It was like Soul, Soul Sunday in our house. The music would go on and then Pops would teach you how to dance, like James Brown and stuff. So we enjoyed it and all of that. But then when I got to a certain age where I was like, well, I'm not listening to this anymore because it's, it's, it's my dad's music and I don't listen to what my dad listens to. So I rebelled for a, for a number of years. And then, like you've just said, full circle, as I've got older, I've started like, oh, now I want to listen to that James Brown. I want to listen to um, like African music, you know, you know like um, especially obviously um, like Ghana High Life music, um, which we'll obviously talk about in a minute. But about how even I don't even understand the words because it's a language that some of the languages I don't even speak um, that, they're, that they're singing in. But still, I can still really feel it. And it, it obviously resonates with me because I've been brought up on it. Yeah. yeah and, um, you probably also find as well that some of the songs that you like, there's elements of the music that you have from granddads that you're like, oh, yeah, this is why I like it. Yes. Yeah. And the full circle is I'm listening to that now and I'm buying it. So I'm buying Gone High Life and I don't understand the words, but I'm still buying it because I love it. It reminds me of some good times. But also, I also then realised that there's been quite a few artists, especially some British artists, who've actually sampled <laughs> Ghana music. Uh, 
my uncles, your, your great uncles, Osibisa, um, you know, people like Rodney P, Black Twang, um, MCD, um, Monkey Sons, all these different uh, Crispy Three, they've all nicked, sampled um, Osibisa music and, you know, and then the list goes on. Fella Kuti's been sampled. You know, there's been quite a few artists, British and USA artists who have sampled um, old school sort of like, uh, you know, not your run of your mill funk and soul from America stuff, but they've sampled stuff from, from African countries like Ghana and Nigeria as well, which is quite... Also, like, those, those artists are probably just like you, you had family of yeah. uh, Ghanaian descent or like, African descent. And yeah. They sampled music that they grew up and they loved. Yeah. 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 Which is, it's nice. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, yeah, that's number one. That's number one. Okay, we'll, we'll have your number two straight away, please. Okay, so number two, um, I hope it's allowed. It's a compilation. I've got two It's not allowed, and you know it's not. Really? <laughs> right, um, go on, it's not a favourite five, but you, it's not allowed, and you know it's not allowed, you little cheat. Uh, and you, you've been list. watching Riddle, aren't you? Yeah? You yeah, went yeah. to the Riddler school of uh, get, squeezing it in there, you little cheat. It helps. it helps because you can get multiple uh, artists on there, but that's not actually the reason. The reason is because uh, a lot of the music that I like is fairly underground. Yeah. And if I'm talking about what influenced me, it's what was available at home. Yes. And that particular one there again was, um, as I'll show it again, it's, it's called The Best of Acid Jazz. Um, yeah. Started CD that was released uh, on global television. Yeah, global television. Yeah. Uh, and that introduced me to a genre that. I didn't even understand the words when I was reading it as a child. Acid jazz, I was like, I don't know what that means. I know what jazz means, but I don't know what, why it's called acid jazz. Um, and yeah, I was, I was always interested in taking CDs. We used to have this cupboard at home um, underneath the stairs that was stacked to the brim of CDs. I remember it well. I remember it well. Yes. I used to look at it and just pick names that looked interesting. That's what I used to do as a child. I uh, stand on my little chair, pull out a CD, try and not make the whole thing fall down so I get killed. <laughs> and uh, take, it, take it to my room and then play it on my little uh, stereo that I had. And I came across that compilation and I was like, wow, okay, this is, um, this is something I really like. And I was very young, nine, 10. Um, and I said, yeah, this is cool. Um, especially like the idea of crossing over genres, um, I just found mind blowing. And it, uh, of course, mainly hip hop is what you like. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, a track on there by Diggable Planets, uh, Rebirth of Slick. Yep, I've got it. And I said, okay, this is definitely hip hop, but it's definitely jazz. You know, mm -hmm. and I remember just starting it again and again and again. I tied in my room, listened to it, played PlayStation, listening to it, and yeah. um, any excuse I could. And then it's really uh, a wide range of music. You know, you had Jamiro Choir on there, who I love. And that's the idea of jazz and funk. You probably didn't realize it at the time as well, but you probably heard it, you know, when you used to come up from London to Newcastle to be with me and obviously with your. With your cousins Tasha and uh, Asha, especially obviously you were always with Asha, um, you would have heard me playing it in the car and probably didn't even realize it from a young yeah. age as well. Yeah, because I'm not really working out what song is what, but I yeah, know that. Yeah, I've heard it yeah. And yeah, that, that song for me is the standout track on that compilation. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few like Us Free, Cantaloupe, massive yeah, song. Got that as well. It's the first song on the album. Um, as, yeah, as a nine and ten year old, I'm listening yeah. to this album I'm thinking this is really special. And yeah. I wasn't aware of what music I liked. If someone said to me what music I liked, I couldn't say, but I'd, I'd show them that album. And also because obviously some of the music, obviously as you know now, some of the music that I used to be playing in the car as well, I used to think, ooh, I can't really play that because I saw a little with all the swearing and gangsterisms and stuff like in. So okay, I used to yeah. play some of the stuff that I could get away with, which was stuff like um, Us Three. Um, and obviously, like you've just said, like, you know, uh, cool like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and obviously when we're in Pops' house, and especially in the summer, barbecues in the back garden there, um, that's the kind of music I was playing. Um, yeah, and also, it's crowd pleasing as well. Yes, it is. But also it's because, again, when you're playing stuff and the neighbours can hear, you don't want to be playing stuff that's got FFF in, 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 in the murder count of about whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of the music was, or even just some of the sort of like stuff that, even if it's not swearing or, 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 or killing, it's maybe a bit adult material, but a lot of that sort of, you got away with being able to play that, so that's the kind of music I would be playing when you were around or when Pops was around, and I could couldn't really get away with playing some of the more harder stuff, you know. Yeah, and definitely also, um, so what Ronnie Jordan, um, if anyone yeah. doesn't know that song, is very well known. You type it in and you're like, oh, I know this. Yeah. 
uh, So What Ronnie Jordan. That uh, track is on there. And that's a song that every time I hear it, I think, yeah, this is, this is top tier jazz. This is really, really good jazz. Right. Um, and growing up on jazz, I did have a, a split on what I felt was boring jazz and what yeah. I thought was good jazz. And the boring yeah. jazz was like more classic, have it on at night, very relaxed, glass of wine. Of course, not as a nine-year-old, I wasn't having a glass of wine, but that kind of idea of what jazz is. Yeah. Uh, but listening to that, I didn't even see it as jazz. I just thought this is a great song. And later on, I realized, oh yeah, this is, this is the jazz that I like and this is really good music. Okay, nice one. So what's your favorite song of that album, did you say? Diggable Planets. Diggable Planets, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool like yeah. that, like Diggable Planets, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool like that, I think it's, the, it's what it's known as, but it's also a rebirth of Slick. Rebirth of so A rebirth of Slick, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, we'll take a little break from your, from your, your, your albums. And sure. um, we'll talk a bit more about you. Um, we want to get a, a bit more about your history. So you're a young child. Um, you know, and for those who don't know, obviously, I live in your castle. Um, and Ruben lives in London with his mom. Um, and dad up in, in, and he was living up there. And what we used to do was, um, in the holidays, we, we, me and, you, and my sister, your mom, would sort of share the responsibility of looking after you. And obviously, because there's only there's less than a year's difference between you and my son Ruben, eh, between you Ruben and my son Asha, um, so you basically you've been brought up like brothers, haven't you? Do you know what I mean? Um, well, I always tell people, um, yeah, you don't get to choose your family, but when you have somebody who would be your friend anyway, it's a bonus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, what used to happen for our holidays, for instance, was for maybe if it was a two week holiday. I would take Asha down there or my dad would take Asha down there and he would stay down there and your mom and would look after you two for a week and then you would come back up here um, and then I would look after you and Pops would look after you up here. Do you know what I mean? Summer holidays, you might spend two or three weeks up here and then Asha would be down there for two or three weeks. Um, so your musical tastes were obviously, <laughs> and then also your Uncle Frank as well in the mix um, of his musical stuff. So when did you decide that you wanted to... Um, get into sort of like the music biz, um, as it were? Uh, it's a mixture. So you did paint the picture there of travelling to and from Newcastle. Yeah. Um, um, I think mainly our family loves music, just in terms of just being music enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. Some people took it further and ended up being musicians or in, in radio or in DJing, and some just yeah. like listening to music. So it was always a part of uh, my life, definitely. Um, but it wasn't something I ever considered. Yeah, I want to do music. Like I, I said at the top of the show, football was always number one. Yeah. And second to music, uh, to football was uh, media or graphic design, something mm -hmm. there, um, before it became music. And I think it was a combination of uh, another uncle of mine I'm going to shout out, which is my dad's youngest brother, uh, Junior. Yeah. Um, he used to uh, spit, what we call it, the grind, but he used to rap a lot um, with his mates. And he's very good. Um, so I used to kind of like watch him, listen to him, and grime, as you know, with a lot of uh, genres when they're underground, it's cool. You know, so he's got all these mates, they've got all like the new era caps, the big aviator jackets, and I'm going to their house parties and they've got a mic and they're clashing each other and it's for fun. And they're saying, oh, your hat's rubbish. And it's like, no, your hat's, and, it's, and they're thinking really quickly and they're freestyling. And I was like, this is cool, I like this. Um, and then with that, you've, you've got grime, which um, again is a genre that, it's been part of my life for a long time because it comes mm -hmm. from all the drummers from before, such as garage, drum and bass, yeah. jungle, reggae. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm really into this. So then I started to, to rap. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that was the, the moment. And here I have to shout you out. Uh, you even helped me bring out a CD once just to make sure it happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Like, crazy little took rapping. You to, you took you to the recording studio in the West End of Newcastle and uh, yeah called the Chat Trust, unfortunately. It was a, a youth project. Unfortunately, yeah. it's not there anymore, but I took you there to, re, to do a recording, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, and that was, that was an amazing experience because I'm watching all these guys that I look up to on TV or on the radio. Mm -hmm. and I'm doing my radio and I felt much closer to them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I was all right and my mates were all right and I even still do it now as a laugh with, with my boys as well. Um, but I think that was the turning point of me actually using my interests Mm -hmm. And it, oh, I'm going to give it a go. I'm not just going to rap with my mates uh, in London on, on the road or uh, go to like a house party and get the mic. Yeah. I've actually decided to go to the studio, bring it out, see what people think. Uh, I used to record on my little laptop, uh, computer at home, play yeah. it out of the 
with my balcony and let my mates listen to it and see what they thought. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't, I have to be honest, I never wanted to be a grime star. I just really enjoyed doing it. Yeah. Um, and I'm always someone who kind of does everything fully. You know, so if I'm going to rap, I'm going to bring out a song and I'm going to make it and then let people hear it. I'm not just going to rap and let you record it on your phone. Yeah. Um, I'm always someone who, if I like something, I'm, I'm going to put everything into it. Mm-hmm. Um, not for any result, just because I want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was my turning point, definitely, was making uh, music, not beats, but rapping or being alongside other people who wanted to do the same thing. Yeah, that was yeah. the turning point. Okay. Cool. Okay, so how did that then turn into you getting into radio though? Because obviously you, you were into that, you were into your rapping and stuff like that, but how did that turn into you um, becoming a radio DJ, yeah. presenter? What would you class yourself as? Uh, yeah, radio presenter and DJ, yeah. Okay. Uh, there was another turning point, I believe, and I sent it to Grandad. Uh, as you know, Grandad buys me and Asha the same technology all the time. Yeah. And he bought me something called a like a, a me jam uh, DJ thing. Really, sweet. I remember it. Yes, um, and you could connect it to your computer and yeah. um, and use like some kind of software with it. But it was a bit nah. Doesn't really let you do too much. But mm. while I was researching it, I came across something else called Virtual DJ, which is a free software you can download and you can just mix music. I went, oh, cool. So just taught myself how to DJ. Didn't look at YouTube or anything like that. Just press the buttons and taught myself and I found that really interesting. Um, and then like I, I mentioned earlier, I do everything fully. So I decided to make some mixes and play it in the car for when we drive to school um, yeah. in the morning. So it would be me, my mum, and I had uh, my neighbours, Andy and William and their mum, would all go to school every morning. Um, but I didn't want to just play grime, for example. My mum and their mum, uh, Auntie Mary, it's not into grime. So I thought I need to play music that everybody likes. You know, so everyone's happy. Everyone gets their one song before they get to school and to work, and then we all we all finish for the morning. And I think definitely looking back, that's early radio presenting and selecting skills, yeah. trying to make sure that I can find music that mixes together because I can't go from jazz to to house. Well, I can now, I'm much more skilled, but then I couldn't. So I had to find something that works for everybody. I know that everybody likes um, and makes everyone happy in the morning. And I think that is my second turning point. Definitely was. Granda giving me those those mini decks and me uh, playing with virtual DJ, making little CDs for the car or for long journeys. Yeah. That was, that was the second turning point. Okay, nice one. Hold that thought yeah. and we'll come back to that then. Okay. Um, sure. Next album. Okay. So the next album uh, is a really big album. Um, and I'm not biased, it was released on my birthday, just coincidence. But it's Ronnie Sai's New Forms, which is a wicked album. Absolutely. I have that album. I have that album. Amazing. Only on, only on CD. I don't have it on vinyl, but yeah, I have that album. Yeah. And uh, that album um, uses so many genres together. Yeah. Uh, and was probably played in my house even more than the Incognito one that I mentioned earlier growing up. Uh, belongs, I think it's my dad's actually, but it could be my mum's. Um, that album is insane. I mean, I, I've never heard music like it before as a child. I wasn't yeah. aware of the genre. It just sounded like good music. Um, and I think that is definitely the reason why it educated me on playing jazz or hip hop or soul or any genre can be made to fuse with dance music. But I didn't realize that at the time, but that was the education there and then was yeah. dance music. And go hand in hand with other classic genres that are really good. Okay. Cool. What's your favorite song of that album? Uh, it was hard to pick, but I went with Digital, um, okay. which is on the first side of that two sided CD um, yeah. album. Uh, yeah, Digital is really good. I did want to uh, pick another one. That went, yeah, uh, but, you, but you know you're not allowed to, so that's not you trying to cheat again, is it, Ruben? Just letting you know, I wanted to. Yeah, well, well you wanted to, but we'll just stop you there, okay? Yeah. But what I wanted to go for mainly was digital because okay. if I think about playing an album, I have to play that song at least twice. I, I, I don't let it end. I start it again two or three times. Funny, I'll have to go and dig it out. I've got a, I've got a big um, sort of like uh, you know grandma's old chest that she's have a big that she bought from Ghana. Um, it's just full of CDs now, and I need to go and dig for that one because uh, 
I haven't played that, you know, I used to always love playing that brown paper bag. Yeah, brown paper bag is... Yeah, and there's a song at the start of it before that where he sort of, he just starts freestyling. Yeah. Um, and then it kicks in the brown paper bag. Well, I've, whenever I've played it, like, live, I've always played the two songs together. They go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't remember what the first one's called, but it's like the intro. Then it just kicks into that, so that's, I like to put them both together, you know. Um, that is what the album is famous for, it's, it's a journey. Yeah. Um, and it's really clever, and that, that all comes from the, the DJing world mm-hmm. of sampling. Because that's how, that's how like, drum and bass and a lot of those dance drummers were formed, you know. Yeah. Sampling sounds and chopping it up, and it's, it's like homage to that. It's start off with something, it's its own track, if you like it, it's this track. But yeah. then it phases. I love it when an album does that as well, by the way. When they yeah. phase two songs together, I just think it's always cool. Nice one. Okay, yeah. So we've got to the point where you're starting to, to muck about in your bedroom with, and you're making your little tips. You've come up to your castle and you've made your, um, I've got that CD recorded for you. Uh, oh yeah, something we called it, didn't we? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I got to print it up. I printed it up on my, on my little CD printer that I had in that and uh, you had your picture on, yeah. on the front with you rapping with, with, your, with, your, so with, your goons, with your goons in the background, Andy and William. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and the little hat dance, remember? Uh, yeah. Andy, that's the <laughs> So we've got we've got to that stage, um, but then obviously it's time for you to leave school and decide what you're going to do. So what what did you go to university to study? So it's actually before university; it was college, um, and oh, yes. I, I wanted to do graphic design, photography, English literature, mm-hmm. and business. Um, and uh, my mum randomly said, I remember very clearly, it was like a Saturday and Channel 4 was on and it was um, T4, which doesn't exist anymore. My mum just said, off the cuff, oh, you'd be good at that, you know? And uh, I remember looking at the TV and thinking, I wouldn't mind that actually, because that allows me to do everything that I like to do. What was that, what was, what was that, that she was talking about? Presenting, like presenting, presenting. T4. Okay, yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, presenting T4 because they're talking about music, or uh-huh. talking about um, fashion, which I'm also interested in. So mm-hmm. I said, talk about your fashion, you can use your interest in fashion, your interest in music. Um, she just said it off the cuff, but she didn't go into the detail like that at the time. She just said it, I remember nodding thinking, yeah, that's a good idea. And it stuck, stuck with me for a couple of yeah. months. And mm-hmm. then I had to make a decision where I wanted to go for college. And I picked this college, which was super far away. I used to commute an hour and a half every day to get there. Which was at uh, Farnham. Barnum, exactly. Yeah. Um, from Croydon, it's, it's, it's a journey. Um, but it was worth it because they were like top 10 in the world for media and graphic design. Yeah. In the UK, sorry, for graphic design and uh, media. So I said, I'm going to go to this place because if I want to do anything to do with TV or media, mm-hmm. I want to go to the best place possible. And I really like this place. So yeah, I made the crazy decision to go to this college, but it was worth it. Um, and while I was there, still in the mindset of TV only, they did a scheme where they took a few children from the media course to a radio station called Eagle Radio. Um, and the idea was to take you to the station once every two weeks, I think it was, and you get to see what it's like. You get to host your own little mini magazine show as like a college show. Um, and they train you. So we did that for a few months and then it finished. And then the lady who was running it took me to the side and said, I've spoken to uh, your teacher. And I said, I want to mentor you because I think you have a really good voice for radio and uh, your knowledge of music is, is pretty good. Um, I think you'd be a really good radio presenter. Yeah. Uh, and I remember saying to her and she laughed she said, I said, yeah, but I want to do TV, not radio. And she laughed. She said, well, if that's what you want to do, you can. She said, just to let you know, many TV presenters started on radio. Yeah. Said, oh, okay. Well, I'm doing it then. No problem. Um, <laughs> and yeah. And then, yeah, I never looked back. That was a, the turning point. I decided to go to uni and study radio. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was definitely the main turning point. And I have to thank her for mentoring me and teaching me a lot um, and guiding me, letting me know um, to never be anybody else when you, when you want to do radio. You just have to be yourself. Um, but learn from people for you. Always take the advice. Learn from people for you, but be yourself because whatever she saw in me was just me being me and just yeah. having fun. Um, and yeah, that's stuck with me ever since. Okay, nice one. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about your radio shows and where you where, where people can catch you. Uh, but we'll come to your fourth choice. Okay, so the next one 
is one that um, is very special. It's called Africanism. Africanism, okay. And it's by um, Africanism. Uh, they call it Africanism All Stars. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a soulful house, contemporary soul, uh, Latin house, Afro house, tribal house album. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, yeah, very, very special um, because there's, the, there's a song in there that I would play nonstop, which is called DJ Gregory Block Party. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has elements of Afro or African music, African elements. Yeah and also Latin elements. Um, and you yeah. touched on Ostivisa earlier. Um, yeah. That's definitely something that I took from Ostivisa. Listening to their music was, okay, just because it's African music doesn't mean it has to just be Africa. You know, you can take influence from across the world um, and bring it together. And I think my favorite thing in music is the mirage between um, different genres. So like fusion, fusion. It's unbelievable. I think. You get you get something really unique. Sometimes it can be really bad, and it just sounds like two separate things. Yeah. But when it comes together to become something else, yeah, yeah that's it's a special thing. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, this one, uh, like I said, standout track is DJ Gregory Block Party. Yeah. Uh, and this album, I didn't realize it at the time, um, but this was the beginning of me realizing I had a specialist sound in music. Definitely now, I would say my specialist uh, selection. Mm -hmm. is so and Afro House, yeah. Jazz, they were the two. Mm -hmm. um, this was very early, this is released in 2001. Yeah. Um, and it's a, a, an album of, of my, my dad's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And it was on repeat. And when I play my sets now, there's songs that I play in my sets that when I look back, I didn't realize was actually on this album, which is by a guy called DJ Gregory. Um, yeah. Also recently, because I knew I was coming on here today, I did a little bit more research on the album, and it blew my mind. Um, but you have a look if you Google it, Africanism All Stars. Mm -hmm. One of the members or associated acts is Osibisa, which I did not know. Okay. <laughs> really, 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 really weird. Yeah. We talk about being full circle. We're talking about full circle. Yeah. Perfect example. So um, that album's that album's in our blood, then. And exactly, and it's the reason why I like it definitely. Um, but I, I, didn't, I didn't know that until yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, in terms of music that I love, Soulful House, Afro House, Tribal House, um, it's probably, it's always hard for me to say, but it's probably my number one genre. Probably. Okay. And funny, you're talking about fusion and stuff like that. Obviously, you're telling people out there, because obviously we, we, we are the Vinyl Vandals and we have a hip hop following, you know, um, of people that are are like-minded like us who like uh, hip-hop music, not just hip-hop music, but mainly hip-hop music. Um, and But one of the things that, because we're vinyl vandals, is that around people going and digging in the crates, as they call it, and looking for samples and beats to be able to, to make new music with. Um, and hopefully they're listening to this thinking, well, actually, I want to check some of this music out um, to go and see what I can do with that music to make more new music. Yeah. Um, Every single song on that, on that album you can sample. There's yeah. so many sounds. The soundscape, the like Latin. I, I, I'm not even going to spoil it. There's so many things on there that you'd, you'd love to sample if you're into okay. sample. And shout out to people like James Watson. Um, obviously, always helps us out with the vinyl vandals. Um, he, I'm sure, will be checking out some of these things that you're seeing as well. Um, I'm sure he likes incognito anyway, but some of the other stuff that you're saying, I'm sure you'll be going to check that out because. Uh, I know he likes his acid jazz, so he's probably already got that album as well. Um, but I'm not sure if you'll have that album that you've just said there. Um, so Africanism Volume One, uh -huh. uh, 2001, Ultimate, absolutely ultimate. Okay, I might, I might check it out myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Nice one. Okay, so the last time I left you was that you went to the college, Farnham College. You were getting into radio, so that was like from from then. You already starting to do sort of like DJ stuff and starting to get into it, um, and you were told that your voice was a good voice for radio. You haven't got you definitely haven't got a face for television, so it's just as well you got a voice for radio. Corny, corny, corny. Can I just say it's t it's it's been it's been half an hour that we've been talking in there. I haven't I haven't I haven't given you any grief once. So let's face it. You know, you're being professional today, so. I was warned by your auntie Emma to um to leave you alone and not give you any grief, but you know. Thank you, Auntie Emma. 
<laughs> I wouldn't be your uncle if I didn't greet you at least once in the whole of the interview. So there we go. Um, so anyway, yeah, you, you're now at college um, and you went there to do graphic design and, and other things, but you've ended up really getting into the radio side. So from college, you went to university, is that right? Yeah, I did radio at, at uni. Um, yeah. That was the main, that's what I decided to do as a career. Of course, to study something at university is, you're definitely thinking about using it for the rest of your life. Um, yeah. So that, that was the big moment for me, um, going to uh, uni, study radio, and they had a student radio station there called, it was Bournemouth University, they had a student radio station called Nerve Radio. Nerve Radio. Uh, Nerve Radio, yeah, just a student station. Yeah. Um, and I had a show in there with a couple of mates, and I had another show with, uh, I had two shows with different friends and did other stuff, ended up managing the evening shows. Yes. Uh, by my third year, I was the manager of the evening side of things, mm -hmm. um, which just meant other new students starting who wanted a show, I'd, I'd look after them, teach them how to use the, the equipment. Um, and yeah, started to take it very seriously. Um, started to, um, yeah, gain a little bit of recognition from a few people. Yeah. Um, and a few people around me were also starting to become fairly successful in their own right. They were starting to move with the right uh, people. I have a friend who yeah. had a, a BBC. Uh, I had a, a friend of mine who I knew through fashion, had a connection at the Hoxton radio station. Yeah. Uh, it's just a few things. So it started to become more real. Yeah. And yeah, definitely the uni moment of studying it day in, day out, using it. Um, having my own show and also still DJing in clubs and stuff. It just became my whole life and it hasn't changed since yeah, okay. halfway through my first year of uni. Okay, cool. So do you want to tell everybody that's tuned in, um, you're talking about being a DJ, you're talking about being on the radio, um, you went from college, so you went from your granddad, Pops, as we call him, uh, you went from Pops, Giving you this little sort of little um, <laughs> two little wheel sort of CD right. mixer thing, yeah, hilarious thing, yeah. That you plug into your laptop. You went from that to I always thought you were going to be a musician. I thought you'd be playing the saxophone or trumpet by now, but that never happened. Uh, there's still time though. Uh, but you went from that to going to college and doing graphic design and, and media studies type thing, like radio and, and other things, yeah, and television and everything. You then realised that radio was your forte and you've went to university. We've got the university and you're in Bournemouth. You've left university with all of those skills that you've learned from, from, from college and uni. And you're now a DJ stroke presenter. Yeah. Where are you with DJ and stroke presenter? Where can people catch you? So I have a weekly show on a Monday. That's called the Groove School Show. Um, Groove School Show, called, yes. Yeah. Show. And that's on Croydon FM. Uh, every yep. Monday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And is that your thing? Is it the Groove Show? Is that what like, your sort of, what you're known as? Is that your sort of... Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always say, when I used to DJ before I went into uh, presenting, um, was I like to bring the groove, like to bring the energy. I don't play anything um, that's just going to make you sit down. It's yeah. time to get up and start moving. Mm -hmm. um, that's always been my thing. So then when I ended up having my own show, I used to do stuff with different friends, but the yeah. thing. Um, and that lasted, started from my last year at uni and it's, it's stuck with me since and that's called The Groove School Show. Um, yep. And it's now on every Monday, like I said, on, on Croydon FM, 5 to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested, have a look at me on Instagram. That's at, oh, you see it, I'm sure you can leave it in all the descriptions, but that's at ruben.jdagreen, um, which is R-E-U-B-E-N.jdagreen. Have a look. and the link and you'll see you'll see my show um and that was um like i said started at uni and my friends enjoyed it and I used to get some nice appraisal from people which is great um, so you're, the groove school is people go and groove to you and they get schooled by your music is that is that the sort of idea behind groove school yeah that's, that's the idea yeah it's um yeah. and it's an education i always say i'm educating your ears yeah um, and uh, you mentioned before a friend of yours called james watson watson's into acid jazz many yeah. friends of I had no idea what that was, you know. Um, yeah. Some people even liked it, but didn't know it was called that. So it's an opportunity to educate you. And if you know already, then you're just going to groove anyway. So yeah, yeah, it's always fun. Um, and like I said, I did it from uni uh, for the, my final year there, um, and people enjoyed it. And then um, once I had my own show in Croydon, uh, which I've been there for two and a half years now, that was when um, it really grew. 
um, at a completely different rate or level to how I was in uni because it was just fun. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to get a good following, a good connection with people. And I mentioned earlier, I love communicating with people and talking with people. Um, so I used to do, or still do, a lot of interviews with different artists, which I, I love doing because you grow. You know, I'm learning from them. My idea of what, how, it, how they got to making that song is usually wrong. They tell yeah. me how it works, and it's like, yeah. whoa, okay, cool. Um, so every time we're growing, they're growing because they're hearing how a fan likes their music. So it's really important. And once again, it's education. That's, that is the group's culture, you know, it's an yeah. educational idea of, of music that we love. Um, and like I said, it grew and grew and grew um, to the point that last year or the end of 2019, um, I had a conversation with an artist um, who's a friend of mine. And he said, oh, you should... Stop, you should. stop, stop. We'll, we'll come to that in a minute after your last one. So we'll we'll, okay. we'll we'll that there. I'm just more interested where people can catch you. So you're on Croydon FM. Where else have you? Where else do you play? Where else do you play live? I know COVID COVID stopped you for a year, but do you do you do live events? You know, um, yeah, yeah. It's difficult to say where. To, I don't have a residency, so I can't say yeah. you can come here to hear me. But yeah, what I yeah. To do is just come to my Instagram. Yeah, and everything I'm doing is always there. Um, yeah. And away from music, I mentioned earlier, I love football. I have a podcast called the Animated Podcast with two mates of mine. Um, and we just talk about football the entire time, um, and it's great. And it's animated too, so you can watch us. It's an animated podcast, yes, I've watched that. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Again, you, need, you need some Jordy, you need some Jordy voices on there. They're not all you cockneys who don't even who don't even live where you support. But that's another story for another time. Yeah. <laughs> where you call someone the at the moment? Well, yeah, but at least I live here. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'll just leave that there. I'll just leave that there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I support yeah. where I live. I support where I live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That forced me to wear a Newcastle kit. I don't live in Newcastle, but you forced me to to support Newcastle. So it doesn't really work. See what I mean? That's different, though. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so um, you're on Croydon FM on a Monday night, five till yeah. seven. Yes. Is there anywhere else that can catch you? Um, you can listen to a mix of mine. I do kind of bi-monthly on Method Radio. Yeah. Okay, uh, Method Radio, yeah. Yeah, that shout, is cool. Shout out to Sandy Duff. Yes. And, and all the crew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and that's called the Era 404 show. Okay. And do the interviews that you were doing, you do, um, do they go out as part of your Monday night show? They do, but you can watch them anytime you want on YouTube. So yeah. So you type in Crew School Show or Crew School Records. Okay. Well, that's um, interesting because... As long as I've known and I've supported you, you've never really told me that the, your interviews are on YouTube. I didn't know they were there. I've never checked them out. So okay, yeah. thanks, thanks for letting your old uncle know who got you into music and that. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, They're not visual. It's just the audio. Uh, yeah. Clip. So have you thought about putting them onto Spotify? Uh, no. No, I haven't actually. But yeah. I'm, look, I'm look, you know, because obviously, as you know, we do the, the favourite five podcasts that we put on the YouTube, but I am now looking to put them onto Spotify because you can put them on for free, you know, Ruben, so if it's worth you thinking. Yeah, so our, our podcast that we do, um, we are very close to putting out on uh, Spotify um, yeah. and our podcast streaming platforms. But well, your interviews, I'm talking about, yeah, I get that, and I know you're sort of now, but I think you, you need to think about your, your music interviews as well, just to, yeah. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, of course yeah. it's a good idea. It's your old uncle here telling you, man. Oh, it's all, I'm always telling you good ideas. <laughs> okay, then. Let's go into your last record. Okay, so the last one, I changed my mind. So I wanted to have one. I'm not going to say it because it just means I can mention everything. But last minute, I decided to change it to this album. But I don't have any visual representation of it. Um, okay. So the words, I'm afraid. But it's Jill Scott's album, her first debut album, Who Is Jill okay. Scott? Um, released on Hidden Beach, released in 2000, um, and this album, the reason why it's, it's last, I may have picked Africanism to come after, because I think I heard Africanism for the first time after Jill Scott, who was Jill Scott, with my mum mm -hmm. played 24 7 at home. Um, but I kind of rediscovered this album for myself, knowing that it was something that was on that all the time at home, Oh, this would be an album I'll, I'll throw on my Blackberry or my iPod when I'm traveling to college or anywhere uh, to listen to. And then I said, oh, okay, this is not just any album. 
that's sort of the run at home. This is this is probably the, the creme de la creme of Neo Soul, in my opinion. It's the best Neo Soul album I've ever heard. Um, and it's got elements of hip hop, of course, and jazz. Um, and it's incredible. Really, really, really good. Top, top, top notch, best album. And I had to pick it um, for that reason, because I, I've heard it all the time at home. And of all the albums that I've, I've played you today, or mentioned to you today, yeah, they inspired me and I might play them every now and then. But the Who Is Jill Scott album, I actually used to play from beginning to end multiple times across different days of the week going to college, in yeah. uni, still now at home. Anyone who knows me knows about the album because I play it all the time. Um, so it's come last because it's still very much part of me now. Okay. As opposed to the other ones who are across my, my okay. upbringing. Can I just say, of your five albums, I'm very disappointed that you've not come with anything that your old uncles in influenced you on. You know what I mean? Because yeah, look, I had, I had a, uh, is it Nah, here? nah, nah, it's too late now. It's too late now. <laughs> I had, uh, it's not here, but I had, I had the uh, Roll Deep, which uh -huh. was one that I, I sacrificed for Joe Scott, because when I just, I thought about influence, I don't think that album influenced me. It's just a representation of music that I was influenced by. Which you grew up with, yeah? Like if I could show you a radio show, yeah. that probably influenced me any, more than any of these albums, which is Logan Summer on Kiss. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is about albums that influenced me, and I'm, in, I'm just forcing it. I'm just putting it in there because I want to talk about Grime, and my uncle um, is interviewing me, and that's yeah. our shared genre that we both like, and yeah. we have loads of conversations about it. But I thought it, it's, it would be unfair, it would be a lie. It's not, it would never be in my, if I had to pick five, I would never pick it, really. So. Okay, well, I'm still disappointed because I thought, you know, like, every time I used to get, used to get a mic car, I used to always have to play a Black Twang tier. Do you remember Black Twang kickoff? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so Rotten, do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had to play that on <laughs> constantly. Yeah, there we go. Um, and he's an Arsenal supporter like you. Um, another faker, not even That's from there, but another faker, not even from there, but supports him anyway. Uh, yeah, those. <laughs> okay, so we're coming to the end, but I think it's very important. That's why I stopped you before to talk about now. Um, yes, you're on you're on Croydon FM, which is great, and you've got like error four oh four. Um, I know I saw you on saw you on Twitch with your sidekick, um, George, and you did your sort of like your your Daft Punk esque sort of like robotic show like a, a lot of fun. how would you describe that what what would you call that i don't even know what you would call it uh, we're just having fun um yeah. i love broken beat a lot um and he loves grime and we both love grime and broken beat and grime work yeah. together very well um so okay. we're just back to back as we used to do when uh, we used to yeah. DJing clubs mm -hmm. um i used to play sofa house or afro house and he'd play like big room house which uh, is completely different but this venue that hired us the earlier parts of the, the, the gig was more for everybody. As it yeah. gets later, it's the niche listeners, so it worked very well for, for me. Um, but yeah, we went back to back again, Broken Beat and yeah. Grime, and we both love games. And um, that was something that we thought would work, like a robotic yeah. kind of just, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's heavy. You know, Broken Beat and Grime are heavy genres. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, so you obviously when you DJ, you've got different types of music that you do. So you, you don't sort of, you have your sort of your jazz stuff and your Afro jazz, but you also have this other side thing, which is like the broken beats and... Yes, and there's, there's, uh, there's actually a, a few places that I, I double with in terms of music. For yeah. My show. The other one that hasn't been spoken about yet today is, is Bella Funk, um, which is... Uh, an album, a, a genre that I really love. It's definitely, if I'm doing a set, I'm definitely more nowadays, people are looking at me to play that type of music more okay. than, than Soulful House or mm -hmm. Jazz or Broken Beat. It's Bad the Funk. Um, and Bad Funk, I came across, yeah, kind of by accident on SoundCloud. Yeah. Um, it's all about discovering music and influences. For me, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm a digital kid and I mm -hmm. came across, um, uh, SoundCloud from quite an early age, many as a, as a means to download music for free. That's how it started. Yeah. It is, uh, as a child, you don't have the money, you just want to download something and DJ later run out of game. Um, mm -hmm. But SoundCloud stuck with me. And um, yeah, I came across Bella Funk. I didn't know it at the time. It's like a Future Beats, which is also another name 
of a genre slash style of funk, and it takes elements of R and B, nineties R and B, like a, a Latin, um, like Latin uh, pop, which is like yeah. balia, which literally means dance, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it kind of comes together for this really upbeat, um, heavy R and B slash dancehall slash Afro slash um, a bit of house sometimes genre. Um, and that gets a lot of love on my show, definitely. Okay. Definitely elevated my show, I think. Okay. I think it's a good point then to mention now that um, obviously you just touched on that there. You're a, you're a, you're a digital kid. You're brought up in the digital age. Um, never understand you young people. Um, you don't want a piece of vinyl in your hand. So how surprised was I in lockdown for you to just come out of the blue and just say, oh, uncle, by the way, uh, I've started my own record label and I'm bringing out a vinyl album. So <laughs> what made you as a digital kid have the cheek to then come back and say, well, actually, uncle, I'm a vinyl vandal because I'm bringing out, I've got my own record label, which is called, uh, what's your record label called? Groove yeah? School Records. Sorry, what's that? Groove School Records. Groove School Records. And I'm going to bring out an album called what? Global Vibrations. Global Vibrations, which is a vinyl album. Yeah. yeah. So why? When you're a, well, when you're a you digital kid. Uh, you describe me as a digital kid, which is true, I am. Well, you, you describe yourself as a digital kid, not me. <laughs> I am a digital kid. I'm a product of my, my time uh, yeah. on Earth. But mm-hmm. I've always, always been dubbed as old school. Always. I'm an old school uh, person, and the music that I love is old. You know, if, mm-hmm. I, if I were to talk about music, like I've, the albums I've spoken about today, I'm sure you could interview an adult, and they'd probably give you the same albums. You know, I'm, I'm an adult? Crazy. Well, you're not an adult, like, are you not? Uh, I'm young. I'm <laughs> you wish. How old are you on your next birthday? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll just leave that one there hanging. Go on. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I am very old school, um, and I've always enjoyed vinyl. I've got a, a, a good vinyl collection, I have to say. Um, nothing like yours or mum's or dad's. I've just started, but it's decent. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing like having something physical in your hand, I think, than having a vinyl yeah. album in your hand you know I've, I've i mentioned earlier going in the cupboard i used to have at home of all those cds um yeah. i not mention it but if i ever saw a vinyl that i couldn't play um straight away because i also wasn't really allowed as a child it was far too complicated to put on a vinyl as a 10 year old yeah. i would just type in the name of the song into the internet and listen to it because i like the look of the album yeah um, and i've always loved holding it it's, and sometimes you see the sticker from the price i'm like 50p for that that's crazy or a little note on there that says I don't know, like to Mish, which is like some people could say that is my mum's name. I'm like, oh, this is mum's. Something nice about holding it and seeing it and the mm-hmm. quality of sound on a vinyl also is, yeah. I start getting nerdy, is amazing. So that is the reason. Okay, so that's the album there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, just bring it up close so people can see it. Global Vibration, volume one. So first, yeah. my first question about this is, I'll just, well, not my first question, because I've just asked my first question, why vinyl? My second question is, it's called Volume 1. Is there plans to be a Volume 2? There is definitely plans, yeah. Um, yeah. It, is, it is basically a, a compilation um, of music I play on my show. Okay. Uh, and that doesn't really change, but it evolves slightly. Yeah. You know, like uh, I mentioned Ballad Funk earlier, there's two or three songs that represent that on the B-side. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've mentioned Broken Beat today. I've mentioned Soul for House today. That's not on there. Mm-hmm. You know, there's more sounds that I, I enjoy that hasn't been represented on Volume okay. 1. So, slight hint, Volume 2 should have um, a lot more Broken Beat and House on there. Um, okay. And if forever, it's going to mainly be jazz because uh, I described it on my show recently. Jazz is like the midfield um, in football, you know, it connects everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, just so I got this right, you told me you were bringing this out, obviously, because of COVID and stuff like that. The, the digital vo- format came out before Christmas, 2020. Yes. Um, yeah. And then 2021, uh, in June or February, uh, the vinyl came out. Yeah. Is that right? So you can, right. now buy, you can now buy this digitally and you can buy this on vinyl. Have you got any vinyl left for people to buy? Many, 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 many. If you want to buy it, come, come okay. and pick it up. 
And where can they get it from? How can they get in touch with you to get vinyl from you? Uh, so you want to go to my Bandcamp, which is the place where you can purchase it. So you want to type in Groove School Records onto Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. um, if for whatever reason you can't come across it, then just head to my Instagram and click the link on my Instagram. Or you yeah. can head to the Groove School Records Instagram, which is literally Groove School Records. Yeah. And the link is always going to be there in the description. And how much is it? Tenner. It's cheap. To tenner, nine ninety nine or ten pounds. Which one is it? Ten pounds on the dot. Ten pounds on the dot. Okay, for a vinyl record this day and age, brand new, not to be snipped. I've got to say, obviously, I'm not a massive uh, Broken Beats, Bella Funk uh, fan. Whatever. Obviously, I learned it from you. But um, the first two tracks on side one, I think it is. Love them. Um, no disrespect to the other ones, but I actually do really love the. The first two tracks, um, I, I checked it out on Spotify first. I, I actually haven't played this yet. Um, oh, cool. This is still this is still wrapped. I just listened to it on Spotify because I've just kept this as a you know proud proud uncle proud uncle. Hey, yeah? thank you. Very very proud. So that's good. You know, um, long 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 may it continue. Have you got any plans to bring like seven inches and twelve inches out of of like no? There's always going to no. be albums. Always, always going to be albums, I think, and I'm not going to bring them out too often. Yes. Because like said, the show does evolve. So yes. It will be like press pause. Let's see what what other things come up that we're into yeah. and mm -hmm. other styles, and then we bring out another one. Okay. Um, there's many things that I like that not in, including there. Like okay. hip hop. Well, there's a bit of hip hop in there, but not really. So I'd love to include okay. some on the next album. Okay, and Ruben, I think we've come to the end. Um. I'm just going to wrap it up um, and then let you have a few words and then come and I'll come back again. But basically, um, tell them where we can get to your radio show. Tell them again where your radio show is, where they can get a hold of you. Okay, so first and foremost, easy as, go to my Instagram, that's at ruben.j.green and that's at r-e-u-b-e-n.j.green. There you'll find in my bio everything. So the first thing I'll talk about is the Groove School Show. We've been running for a couple of years now on Croydon FM, which is based in Croydon, hence the name. Um, we're on every Monday, 5 p.m. till 7 p.m., and that's called The Crew School Show. Uh, second to that, I have a podcast that comes out bi-monthly, and that's called The Animated Podcast. It's me and two mates. If you're into football and you want to hear a few guys ramble um, and get super angry and then laugh at the cartoon representation of what we're talking about, then the TAP podcast is for you. Um, and that's at TAP podcast so tap podcast um check us out again that's in my bio um finally the era 404 show that's also um, monthly on method radio um so check that out again you'll find everything that i do on my instagram and if you want to keep involved with the group school record stuff head to my band camp group school records if for whatever reason you can't spell or you can't find it it's all good just head to my instagram like i said before um, and you'll find everything there. And you can get in touch with me because I'll send you there anyway. Yes. Yeah. Easy, so easy. I think it's important, obviously, that people get a shout out. I think um, all the vinyl vandals in our family. So I'm going to shout out to um, the original vinyl vandal from our family, which is Pops. He's the one who gave me my inspiration into buying records. And he bought my first ever record that I ever got, which is the Crazy World of Arthur Brown. Uh, my first ever like seven inch single that he bought because he knew I loved the video that used to be on top of the pops so he bought me the single and it started from there and it's never stopped it's been in fits and spurts when vinyl wasn't so popular and I started buying CDs but you know I've come back on the vinyl again I never got rid of the vinyl, original vinyl that I had so pops obviously Uncle Mac um, R.I.P. Uncle Mac um, one of the founding members of Osobisa um, and also my, who's my dad's brother I'm my dad's other brother, which is Teddy Osei, um, the leader of OCBSA, who's still rocking today, um, who's the saxophone player, um, and other guys that they've had with um, High Life Music as well, with the Comets and Cat's Paw. Um, then also, it's good to shout out um, my brother, your uncle, Uncle Frank. He's definitely a vinyl vandal and all the records that he's got. Like you said, um, and I'm only talking about my side of the family here. Um, but shout out to your mom, who loves her vinyl. Like I said, your uncle Frank, um, my brother, um, also Auntie Matilda. You'd be surprised to know has a, has a, a lot of vinyl as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
and then obviously um the rest of the vinyl vandals shout out the riddler julie and john then obviously your other side of the tree your dad your um r.i.p to selwyn yeah he was a mad radio fan as uh, sorry video like uh, vinyl fan as well wasn't he yeah, yeah um and who else yeah um in terms of people to shout out uh like i mentioned earlier my uncle junior um massively into grime and also garage um and i think i think it, for him, not just the genres, but the culture. You know, right. I was really able to see at seven, eight, nine years old, uh, people who were 17, 18 at the time, rapping along to grime and going to all these these uh, sets, these radio sets, and just spitting. And, and it was really interesting for me. Um, my cousin Sarita and her interesting garage, and my auntie Faye and her interesting garage um, as well. Um, because I would say on, on our side, the, my mum's side, uh, I don't think garage is really something that was played a lot. No. But on my dad's side, definitely garage. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a London boy, definitely mm -hmm. garage is massive in London. It's massive all over the world now, but massive in London. Um, and again, that and uh, I think the combination of grime and garage introduced me to the music that I love now, like UK Funky House, I haven't mentioned. Yeah. Massive for a short period, but it was massive. Um, and that's all thanks to all the music that came before me, you know, so yeah, shout, shout out to the family. Um, we're very lucky to be part of a musical family and from both sides. Um, and yes, you've just reminded me, obviously, Uncle Mark's son, my cousin, um, a bit like you and Asha, I was brought up with Frankie, yeah. Uh, Frankie Tonto, uh, he's a drummer, um, you know, drummed with some of the best uh, musicians in the world from Joss Stone to um, Amy Winehouse, to uh, Craig David and lots more. Um, yeah, um, shout out to him as well, because obviously his musical influence in the family is, a, is another biggie as well. And to everybody else, yeah, obviously um, your uncle Sam, my cousin Sam, he's a massive jazz head. Uh, you can't go to his house without hearing jazz blasted from the speakers. Um, and I can go on and on and on, can't I? I can definitely go on and on and on. Just um, a lot Uncle Frankie, his, his influence was interesting because Everyone else I mentioned was them playing music that yeah. they liked. But Uncle Frankie, he was making music, um, but also at a very high level. And yeah. it just it always, I think you sometimes kind of underestimate the influence it can have on someone young. But for me, watching them, I was like, oh, it's, it's, not, um, it's not unbelievable. That, that the other side is mm -hmm. just, it's not, it's not yeah. something that's unbelievable, it's attainable. Um, yeah, yeah shouts to him for doing that so you can show the rest of us that it's possible. So yeah. me and his nephew, I was able to. Okay, nice one. So if you've got a story to tell about your musical influences, that you've come to the right place. We are the Vinyl Vandals. Thanks for tuning in. Ruben, thanks, you've been a fabulous guest. Um, Thank you for good, me. good luck uh, with everything that you're doing. Um, keep us informed. If you bring another album out, we'll have you back on the show. That would be great to hear from you. Um, yeah. You also forgot to say that you've been on Jazz, Jazz FM a few times now as well. Um, I, don't yeah, brag. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to brag, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so well done on that little gig as well, Jazz FM. It's a good look. Um, and thank you. Peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you.